Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I've got to put a video on here for several of you that have contacted us in regards to potentially adjusting your air sensor and your combustion fan and your auger motor. Now, on the back of your board, which most of you probably have never seen before, you have a setting. Now this setting right here is the only setting on the user board to where you can make uh, multiple adjustments just by turning one screw. Now what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a very small micro screwdriver in order to make it happen. Now as you can see here, on the back of the user board, there are two test points up at the top, two test points right in the center, and then there are two test points down at the bottom. They are marked. Top is marked air, the center is marked auger, and the bottom is uh, marked HIC, Hall IC. You're going to need a, uh, a DC voltmeter in order to check uh, the parameters of each one of those uh, positions. Now, the very first thing to understand is where the factory setting is uh, on the board in case, let's just say that you picked up this stove uh, second hand and you didn't buy it brand new knowing that you've never made any adjustments back here. But the problem that we're finding is a lot of individuals are buying you know, homes and they're getting a, a used stove uh, in the home and they have no idea what the stove is, uh, how it operates, uh, how to change settings on it. And this is pretty much um, the video that's gonna help you make sure that your stove is set to factory settings. Now, the factory settings is when the little screw here is turned to where it is at the 12 o'clock position. The 12 o'clock position is actually 2.5 volts DC. Now, <clears throat> why would you want to change the voltage settings on the back of this user board? The main reason is, as a stove gets older, it's not as airtight, okay? It has old gaskets on the doors, on the components. Um, and what happens is, is it allows additional air uh, into the stove itself. And the parameters have to be changed in order for it to burn properly and efficiently. You're gonna wanna watch our motherboard upgrade uh, by upgrading the EEPROM to a 3.5 in order to get the most out of your stove and to give you the most options in order to add features to the stove. And when you have the highest uh, EEPROM, the 3.5B, the stove is gonna give you everything that you need, battery backup, self-cleaning mode, uh, the, the best efficiency settings and so forth. But there again, if we give you a 3.5B on your motherboard, the back setting here on your user board has to be at 12 o'clock. That's the factory setting. Now, on the front of the board, I just wanna make this very clear. This is called the potentiometer, okay? Your power switch. So when you're testing all the way clockwise on high, all the way counterclockwise on low. Now for some of you that have written and asked us, you have said, hey Scott, I've got a light that's flashing on my user board. Can you tell me what that is? That light basically signifies that power is being sent to your auger motor. So every time it turns on, your auger motor is turning or should be turning. So if you're ever in a position to where that auger motor uh, doesn't seem to be turning, but this light is flashing, then that's a good time to go to the back and test the auger. Or you're going to want to dive into the stove and you're going to want to see if the tightening screw on the auger shaft has come loose. And so when the light turns on, 
it just sits there and spins, but it doesn't turn the internal auger um, itself. Just remember, if you're gonna start changing the settings back here on your user board, and you all of a sudden get into a different brand of pellet, the pellets are going to be burning too rich uh, to where it's going to be smoking a lot due to the fact that the air uh, mixture with the auger speed is not going to be set properly uh, and so forth. So always remember, maybe even, you know, tell mama, you husbands out there, that you're making a change on the setting. And if we ever change pellets, then we have to make sure that we turn this back to 12 o'clock setting, or we're going to have to readjust it according to the quality of the pellet. Now also, one last thing right here down on the bottom. This is your main fuse for your stove. This is a 3.1 slow blow. If you do not have a 3.1 slow blow, get on the computer, email us and say, Scott, Julie, I need fuses for my stove. We will make sure that you have the proper fuse. If you do not use the proper fuse, Good chance you're going to damage some electronic components if you ever get a surge or your stove shuts down or if a part fails um, or if the power goes out in your neighborhood and comes back on. You just want to make sure that you're protected the way the factory intended it to be. Okay, that's it. That sweet, that simple, that easy. Thanks a lot for all of your support out there, guys. And I have a lot of individuals that are showing a lot of trust and faith in, in these videos. Technicians are calling us, thanking us because they're finally able to help in states to where there is nobody out there that's got the knowledge in order to be able to get these stoves up and running. Now, again, we're not all-knowing. We don't know every single thing that there is. There's smarter people out there than us because I'm pretty dumb at times. Yeah, that's right. And, but 33 years of dealing with Osterflom and Rika, you know, we got an upper hand on most individuals out there. So you guys stay safe out there. And if you have any questions, email us at offgridstoves at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to give us a call, 800-348-1021. Peace.